All right, so this section covers pages 83 to 85 in the book. Um, we're going to be talking about list boxes and text boxes in the UI form, uh, which will also give us the ability to add and remove items. So we're going to talk a little bit about inventory as well. Later on, we'll be getting into a much more advanced form of inventory using object-oriented programming. Uh, but for now, let's just start using the list boxes. So to start out with, inside of the toolbox under Common Controls, you should find an item called list box. Go ahead and double click that. That creates a list box, which right now just says list box one. I'm going to expand it out a little bit so it just matches the size of the buttons a little better. And I'm going to add a pair of buttons to this. I'm going to expand out my form a little bit. But I'll just select one and then hit control C D, control C D. That creates two separate buttons. And I am going to give them new names. So, well, the first, let's give them their actual text names. What are they supposed to be? So the first one should be add item. Add item. So we're going to call it, we're going to go up to its name, and we're going to call it add item without a space. Second one, we will be calling, it's going to be called, uh, let's see, remove. So let's call it remove. And let me go down to the text, and I'll just say remove. Okay, so we have add item and remove item. Well, or just remove. Now, one other thing I want to add here is a text box. So I'm going to go back into our toolbox, and there should be an item in here called tool or text box. I double click it, it adds to the form. Now the idea is, whenever somebody clicks add item, it will take whatever is inside of this text box and add it to this list. So I'm just going to play this while there's no code for any of this yet. I'm just going to play it so you can see what it looks like. So this is blank. does nothing when you click on it, nothing happens. Add item and remove item does nothing in the text box. You can type stuff into. Alright, all the rest of the code should still work, which it does. All right. So these are the basic components we're going to be working with this time. What I want to do is go to my add item. I'll start with that. And first, actually, before I do, I'm just going to check the names. So the list box one is called list box one. I am going to go up to its name and change it to something a little easier to find so we know what it's there for. And I'm going to call it inventory. If I can spell. All right, inventory. The text box is called text box one. I clicked on that and I am going to change its name to item name. Notice I'm not changing its text. Its text by default is blank. And now I'm gonna double click on the add item. Now this is gonna be a very simple one line of code. We're going to say what do we call it? Inventory dot items dot add. So the inventory, that list box that we have, has an item, has something under it called items, which is actually a list. It is an object collection, and it can hold on to a lot of different things. Uh, we're just going to pass in something obvious, a string. We're going to pass into it, we'll start out with something easy, we'll just say new item. I just passed in a string called new item. Now let's go ahead and play the code. And for the code, I will type it, I'll just, oh, I can type in anything I want to, it doesn't matter, but I click add item, I get new item in here. And it's selectable. I can add several of these and I can select which one I want. Now I'm trying control click. Control click doesn't work right now. The way it defaults to is a single, single selectable item. All right, so now let's change this. So when we click add item, it'll actually add whatever was in this text box. So right now, it's just adding the string new item. To actually get something more out of it, we're gonna, instead of it being a hard-coded string, we're gonna say now equals, uh, what did we call that text box? Let me double click on, or just click on that once. 
and it says it's in the properties, it's called item name. All right, let's go back to the code, and it will be item name dot text. This is the text that was entered into the item name text box. So just by looking at this, we can see the method is called add item click. So they clicked to add an item. And then we see that we are taking the inventory and the items inside the inventory and adding to it. And we are adding the current item name's text. So let's press play and see how that works. I'll start out by just clicking add item. I get a couple blank items in there. Let me add something in specific. I can add it multiple times. I could say sword, add item. I could say shield, add item. All right, so I've got different items inside of this list. The next thing I want to do is be able to remove something. For instance, we have selected an item, so we want to remove it. I will stop the code. And now I'm going to find in the form the remove item. This is going to be fairly easy as well, at least initially. I'm going to show you how we might end up crashing our form and how to deal with that as well. So with this, I'm going to start out by saying inventory dot items dot remove at remove at, you can see the IntelliSense comes up and says it removes an item at the specified index within the collection. Now all we need to do is find out what the current selected item is, what the index of it is. So I'm going to say inventory dot selected index gets or sets the zero base index of the currently selected item. It gets the index of the currently selected item. Now this should remove the item, so let's test it out. Play. Move the form over. Let's start this out with something simple. A, B, C, and D. Okay, so if I click on C and I say remove, I have A, B, D. If I click on A, I remove, I now get B, D. If I add D again, add item, add item, and add another B. I can click on any one of these. I just want to point out the fact that even the, it, it's doing this by index, not by the name of the item, which is important because sometimes you might have duplicate items in here. So if I remove the B, it should only remove the top one, not the bottom one. I click remove, and it only removed the top one. So that is to add and remove items from a list. I'm going to drag this down so it's actually lined up a little better with everything else. And the text box doesn't make much sense to the user right now. Neither does the inventory, because it's just a big blank box. So I'm going to move those both down a little bit. And I'm going to add what's called a label. So the label, just add it right above inventory. I'm just going to type in while I have it, inventory and hit enter. And right now both of these say inventory, but remember the list box disappears. The text inside it disappears. Right now it's just telling us its name. This is the text. Now I'm going to do control C V, copy the inventory label over to here, and say item name. And what we've spent what we've essentially done is make made it easier for a user inside of the program to understand what they're doing. Now one more thing we can do on top of that, I'm going to expand this out a little bit, select these items, oops, drag them over to the side. Next I'm going to find what's called a group box. Let's see, do we have one in here? We do not. So let's check out, it should be under all, I'm most commonly we'll be using the common controls because that has most of the stuff that we want, uh, containers. Actually, it's just in the next one below called Containers, called Group Box. I'm going to select the Group Box. I'll just drag it in here. A Group Box is fairly interesting. I can take its name and change it, and I'll call this uh, I'll call this Inventory. Oh, sorry, that's its name. 
I don't want to change its name. I want to change its text, which is currently called Groupbox One. I'll call it Inventory Tools. Now I'm going to take all this stuff, Control X to cut it, and then click on the Inventory Tools and Control V to paste it. Now what's interesting about this is that these are now associated with the Inventory Tools themselves. So if I grab the Inventory Tools group box, I can move this anywhere and it includes the items that were inside it. Now I'm going to take my form and shrink it back down. And also adjust the group box so it matches a little better. All right. Now that I have inventory tools in here from the group box, I'm going to get rid of it from the label over here. And just expand this back up. So there is my new inventory program. Let me play it. And it's starting to look a little bit better. Not that we're trying to go for a lot of UI design here or a lot of UX. Uh, but if I click Add Item, it doesn't work. If I click Remove Item, nothing's actually happening. That Control Paste did more damage than expected. So let's go ahead and check out what happened with that. If I click on the text box, it's still called item name. If I click on add item or remove item, they're still called the same things. So what actually happened? I'm going to show you what happened. What happened is there's a section called the form designer. Now I want to point something out. This says Windows generated code. It has a couple lines in here. If I expand this out, do not modify. Basically what happens is anytime you make a change to the user interface by adding a button, changing the text on a button, it automatically rewrites this code. And if something goes wrong with it, it doesn't know what to do. So let me check like button one over here. We can see button one. This was that first button we created for the four next. Its click is plus equal to an event handler. This is actually how it ties the click to the event. This is stuff that happens behind the scenes, but it's stuff you could do in your own code as well. So you could dynamically produce buttons and actually take them over. Now I'm showing you this stuff so you understand what's broken with it right now. I recommend waiting to actually experiment with this because watch what happens if I get rid of something here. If I'm inside of this and let's say I got rid of this item and I went back to the form design, I now have an error and the form, the UI interface does not show up. That's bad. Fortunately, I can hit control Z and control Z puts the item back so I go back into the design and it's there again. Great. Uh, but what? let me show you this now. The designer code for the button tied the click method in. And here's the other click method. These were not copied and pasted or cut and pasted. So the add score also had its click and so did the show score. Now let me go over to add item. Add item does not have a click method in here. That one disappeared. The copy and paste put back all its styles, but didn't put back the actual methods. Fortunately, it should try tying to the exact same method name, but let's check that out. I'm going to go into the form, and I'll show you how to do this. I'm not going to double click on inventory or on uh, add item. I'm just clicking once, and over in the properties window, which remember, right click, and you can bring up properties if it's not there. On the top tab, you should have an events, which shows up as the lightning bolt. You click on that and inside it immediately takes me to the click event, which isn't tied to anything. I can click the down arrow and it shows me everything that could potentially work. Now if this were still button one, button two, that'd be confusing. But we know this is add item. So I click and I retied that to add item. Now I'm gonna go to the remove and do the same thing. Click is now tied to the remove underscore click. You could, t you could set multiple methods to actually get fired when you click one button, but that's future classes. What we're doing right now is just repairing. Now this designer, if I go back into here, you can see it added a click to the new item. In fact, it even changed what my code was still highlighted up here and it got broken in how it was highlighted. It added this new line and so did the remove, also added the click. It got tied into the actual methods and this is the actual method name, add item underscore click. When I'm in the code, I see add item underscore click. That's how these methods are actually getting tied behind the scenes. So that's some additional good information to know. Let's test this to make sure it actually worked. And before we do, close the designer. You don't want to save any of the changes that were made to it if you did. Um, that's just to show you where things are getting wired up behind the scenes. Typically, you never want to mess with that. Um, professional designers don't mess with that. The primary reason is because anything you do there manually will not be there the first time you make any change to the user interface from the UI, from this design form itself. It rewrites all that code inside there. All right, so now let's test this out. Play. Bring the form over, A add item, F add item, going to remove the A, 
going to remove the F. All right. And it's working.